Hello, hello, my nasties. Here she is for the second vlog in a row, making an appearance completely unkempt, borderline unhinged. I mean, I don't look that bad, but I mean, you know your girl is going through it when she's covered in a mix of sweat, sunscreen, and I don't put a lash on, and even my hair, look at this, my hair is in dire need of a touch-up, oof. But you know, that's the beauty of hats. They hide a myriad of sins. Look at this. No product in my hair. Oh, you can really see the fading, huh? Listen, it's 106 outside. I'm boiling and I need to go run some more errands. As a matter of fact, one of my errands is sitting right here. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna have to cut this a little bit because there are addresses, but I've got orders. Ooh, and another one right here. Okay, let's not, let's not share the orders anymore. I need to hop down to the post office and then I have to run down to a couple of stores really quickly for some necessities. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a busy, busy, busy day. I have already recorded myself packaging those orders and this is going to be a week long vlog, which means that I'm going to film snippets throughout the day, compile them, you get it, right? So in this vlog, what I anticipate doing for the next couple of days, next week, this week, is going to be packaging orders, which we've already done most of them. I'm going to be working on my new coloring book, which I will not reveal yet, but I'm going to be working on Patreon coloring pages. I have, oh God, what else do I need to do? I need to start a new color and chat. I need to start a new sketchy Saturday. It's gonna be a busy, busy week. And on top of that, I have a few other unrelated projects that I need to work on, unrelated to my brands. It's uh, graphic design -y type of stuff. So I need to deal with all of that. And lest we forget Ms. Coco Naughty, I need to do some work on the store. So it's going to be an incredibly busy week for me, but I'm excited for it. And of course, sprinkled in, oh my gosh, look at you, look at you. What is happening with this prop? Okay, see, I, I strategically wear tops like this when I have necklaces that fit like this. You see, it's, it's, it's 106 degrees outside. I look a mess, and yet I'm still trying to be presentable. See, I'm putting forth an effort. My nails are still gone. Do you see that we're growing out the natural nails? It's that time. You guys know I do that a couple times a year. I grow out the naturals, and then after I get sick of doing that, the fake ones come back. But anywho... Today is going to be a work, work, work day, post office, errands. Then I'm going to probably be starting my color and chat, definitely working on the new coloring book. I need to clean the apartment because the resident gremlin, ah, uh, don't know if he's on camera right now, but he's being a disgusting dog because, you know, disgusting dogs. But uh, he's down there being a gremlin. He destroyed my apartment as always, as have I. My apartment is a freaking mess right now. I need to clean. I've been packaging all morning, so I have all of my packaging supplies everywhere. It is a disaster. So I need to deal with that. It's one bedroom apartment life when you're trying to run an art shop, a fashion, online fashion boutique, and you have no space for anything, right? It is a mess. I literally have to clean every single day or else this place would look a million times worse than this. So come on, we need a bigger space. We need a bigger space. I, uh, ooh, we're gonna have a little chit chat. I need to run out the door in 10, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I guess I have in half an hour really to waste time. So you know what? Let's have a little chitty chat before I go. Oh, great. And here comes, here comes my air conditioner to be obnoxious as hell. You know, I guess I could really save this portion of the video for a voiceover, I guess, I probably should. But I'll keep it quick. So she says it will likely turn into a half an hour diatribe. But I recently went on a sourcing trip and I do that periodically because I run an online fashion boutique, vintage fashion primarily, and where am I going to find vintage clothing? I need to go out into the wild and find it in the wild. So I go on sourcing trips. And I also have a side, 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 side hustle uh, in which I sell a selection of curated vintage goods. So I've never talked about it on this channel. I never will. It's unrelated completely to everything. It's just, you all know, I love vintage 
and I enjoy envisioning vintage and curating vintage for other people. And because of that, you know, people will say, hey, Carla, I'm looking for this. Where can I find this? Or Carla, can you find me this? And da, da, da. And I love it. So I thought, you know what? Now, when I find something fun, you know, vintage, kitsch, just a little off kilter, I'm going to purchase it and sell it. For those of you who do not have the time, the will, the desire to uh, sustain the or the ability to sustain the heartbreak that is going out vintage shopping because it is a very uh, defeatist activity. It's very difficult finding items out in the wild. But anyway, I go out sourcing, I get all of that done, and then I come home to my tiny apartment. And you all, my apartment is tiny, it is manageable, it is great, until I make a mess. You know, if I'm working on paintings, if I'm doing photography for Coco Nadi, you know, modeling clothing, if I am packaging, it's all just too much of too much. This tiny space is tiny. I have this living room and then I have, I don't have a kitchen, thank goodness. I have a kitchenette. I don't cook, so a kitchenette is perfectly fine for me. I have a stove, a toaster oven, and a sink and a refrigerator. That's all I need and that's perfectly fine. I don't need it taking up any more space, but I have that. And then I have uh, where my dining area should be. It's it's small. It's um probably what, like six by eight maybe? maybe maybe the smidge bigger but i don't have a dining table i don't do, i mean i have a little bistro table where I, where I have my morning coffee and all of that but i don't have a designated dining table i have turned that into my art desk area so i have my art table and that is also my shipping station and in some cases my photography station so this tiny apartment is multifunctional because i force it to be multifunctional and it just, it feels very, mm, like it, it's chaotic and I'm very crammed in. I love it, I can handle it and it's fine. But what I find when I go out sourcing and when I'm out in the middle of nowhere, when I'm out driving you know, to and from cities to go source for vintage, I typically end up in really teeny tiny towns or in the middle of the desert. And I love that feeling of the wild, wide open spaces without people. I'm in a bit of a, I'm in a bit of a weird, oh God, it's, um, it's a bit of a crossroads mentally where I'm trying to figure out a way to mitigate the feelings of being uh, constantly in a state of controlled chaos and complete serenity because when I am working, I am happy, and that is my happy place. That is my serenity, right? But I'm constantly operating at a low level of uh, anxiety, and uh, but not bad anxiety. It's good anxiety. It's that work, 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 go, go, juice kind of anxiety, which is great. Um, I know that some people have such a, they're so anti-hustle culture, and I think that hustle culture is actually good for you if, if, this is a huge if, fuck if you are of the personality type who can thrive on the hustle right uh, it's very important to maintain balance with that hustle and that's where i think people people they fall in one of two categories they either think hustle culture is the most unhealthiest thing in the world uh it's it's bad for you you don't get to enjoy your life you're constantly da, 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 da. and on the other hand people they thrive on it you know they feel alive when they're hustling but at the same time they completely disregard the magic that is slowing down see i sit somewhere in the middle because i have a manic personality i'm constantly all day you know get it done go to work make something think something drink some dream something Put a funky outfit together. I mean, not today, because biker shorts and a crop top. We're running errands today, all right? But that sort of thing. My mind is constantly going like this. I need that hustle. I would not be able to run a fashion boutique, an art shop, and balance all sorts of other projects if I did not have that hustle in my blood. I love it. I thrive on it. But at the same time, I'm self-aware enough to know that I also need space. The, the odd thing is that I 
if you were to toss me, because this would be my ideal, I would have a small home deep in the desert that is far enough away from any neighbors, just silence, craggy rocks, cacti, wild desert quail running around, just that wide open silence in which I can fully let this freak show just explode. I feel as though I'm more productive when the scenery around me is absolutely still. I am not antisocial. I am selectively social, as you guys already know. And I'm not blaming people. I'm not saying, oh my God, people are terrible. I freaking hate people, blah, 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 which isn't the case because I quite like the right people, right? But there's a certain anxiety that comes with being with living and creating and existing within close quarters of other people whose energies do not align with mine. And I know this sounds a bit woo woo and such, but I think there's truth to the idea that some people maybe are more sensitive to other people's energy. And I I happen to be one of them. I'm not over here saying that I'm some sort of psychic energy reader, this, this, that, and the other, but my intuition is pretty loud and I feel as though it's getting louder the more I become, the more insular I become, the louder I'm feeling that my intuitive senses are kicking in. And I just, I feel as though, you know, when the neighbors are in a bad mood, when the people are causing chaos, you know, down the street, they're, I live in Palm Springs, so there are restaurants, bars, hotels all over the place, and there's always something going on. And I feel like there, there, there's a constant buzz of energy around me that when I exist in my own bubble that is already chaotic as it is, I feel as though there's a constant... Uh, the, the chaotic energies are orbiting around each other and they are colliding every once in a while. And it's, it, it kind of throws me a little off kilter. It, it slows me down. Some people thrive on chaos. People who live in large cities, Los Angeles, New York, they, they need that. I don't. It slows me down. You know, I need to be, this is the duality of me, right? I am a creature of extremes. I, I would love to be in the middle of nowhere so that I can really go to town and go at it. And so that's where I'm, this is completely wild. I'm probably just completely losing it, right? In even entertaining this idea. But each time, I find myself out in the middle of nowhere on a day trip at an Airbnb, whatever it is, in the middle of the desert. I just think, oh, it would be nice to live here. And then when I come back into Palm Springs, I think, I don't want to be in Palm Springs right now. I don't. I want to go back to that wide open desert. I return home and I reacclimate. And then I settle down. This, the thoughts start to settle down a little bit. And I go, no, Palm Springs is an amazing town. I love it here. It's beautiful. It's a small town. I mean, it's a city technically, but it is a city of approximately 45,000 people, 46,000 at Teeters. And of those 46,000 people, about one third, maybe a half of the population isn't even here full time. This is a primarily a retirement community, and there's also a lot of money here. I always joke that it's either the servants or the people with money who live here, right? The hospitality industry or the people who, who the hospitality industry serves. And so I'm a freelancer, so I don't have to deal with, well, I'm an artist, full-time creative, freelancer, blah, 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 so I don't have to, I don't actually work here. I don't, I'm not employed anywhere in Palm Springs. I work online. So I don't consider myself part of that category, but I'm definitely not, not one of the muddied folk up there, right? But the, all of that to say that these people purchase second and third homes here, and then when it gets hot, they just abandon their house and they go live somewhere else, you know? And so this city is incredibly quiet for about half the year, and it's wonderful. And I think, who the hell am I to complain about that? Why would I want something different? And so. 
I get all emotional about it for a couple of days. You know, oh, I would love to have a home or something out in the desert, whether here or somewhere. You know where I love? I love any Arizona. I know I have people from Arizona, actually. But Tucson, Arizona is just so beautiful. Eastern Tucson, of course, because, duh. If you know, you know. If you live in Arizona, it's just beautiful. Just mountainous, desert, gorgeousness. It's perfect. It is the quintessential desert. And I think, okay, but girl, you're over here entertaining these wild fantasies of having, of living somewhere else, but where you're living is great. So appreciate what you have. Don't be dumb. You love Palm Springs. You love the desert. And it's true. I love it here. So I'm, I'm doing a little dance. My brain and my heart are kind of doing a little tug of war, and I just need to figure out a way to balance my self so that I don't feel as though I'm existing in a constant state of noise and chaos. My noise and chaos is okay, but dealing with the noise and chaos of everyone else outside of my orbit. And I'm not over here poo-pooing other people's lives. You know, everybody, everybody's living their life. It's fine. It, it's not a them problem. It's a me problem. I fully understand that. And am I in a position to move right now? Could I honestly, where am I going to pull first and last month's rent, a deposit, where am I going to say, hey, I, because now, especially in California, oh, you have to earn three and a half times your rent. I don't make a hundred grand. Where am I going to pull that money out of my butt from? You know, it's, it's not possible. So it's just me having these wild internal monologues, these fantasies of having a hermit life out in the desert. And so I did, I need to, I'm rambling now, aren't I? I need to leave. I, I do, I need to go. But that's where I am. That is my mental state right now, is that I'm figuring out how to balance my mental state, my emotional state. And I think one idea that I came up with is don't be crazy. Don't plan on, you know, leaving Palm Springs. No, 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 no not that. But what I need to do maybe is every month or two, you know, not, not too often, but maybe I need to just for a couple of nights rent an Airbnb way out in the middle of the desert and just work, just dive into my work for two full days, just a full weekend, just nonstop, full stop, wake up at the crack of dawn because when I'm out in the middle of the desert like that, naturally I wake up at the crack of dawn. All of these sleeping problems and all of that shit that I have here where I don't fall asleep until five, six in the morning, it's gone, gone, gone without any effort. I wake up at the crack of dawn with the sun. It's wild. The And that's one reason why I feel as though there's something in me saying you need to do something. You need to figure something out. Don't make any rash decisions, but listen to your gut. Something's telling you that maybe, maybe, maybe this is something that you may want to entertain. I don't know. So nothing crazy is happening don't don't clutch your pearl she's not leaving i mean i can't anyway i don't have the funds for it but it's nothing like that i'm not you know nothing nothing is happening i'm just telling you that that is the state of my mind at the moment and if anybody is feeling you know confused or a little bit lost maybe we all are even this one who's always so you know cocky and confident yeah you know i'm, I'm feeling a little off as well i'm feeling good i'm being productive but there's a little, a little something in there, a little something in there stirring. I need to figure it out. And I will, again, brain, heart, they need to, they need to figure their shit out so that I know what to do. But for now, all is well. Uh, time to get to work, time to get out of here and get these errands done. And I need some coffee, so I'm going to do that. I haven't had coffee in over two weeks and I'm in the mood for it. So let's go. Ooh, what have we here? orders look at this beautiful spread we have paintings we have stickers we have bedazzled genitals which i will explain in a minute we've got wax melts signed books did i say that already anyway we've got a ton of beautiful things so thank you to everyone who placed an order during the course of this blog blog vlog vlog look at that beautiful juicy varnish i've been trying something new with my paintings the gloss varnish has gotten glossier and i am treating some of the paintings with a glitter treatment that is just 
so much more tacky fabulous than previous. All of my artwork will not have this glitter treatment. You can see me showing it off right here. So to the individual who purchased that painting, you were the first one to get a painting with that treatment. I hope you like it. It's cute. It's wonderful. It's just, it's tacky fabulous and brilliant. So anywho, the genitalia. So I did explain this on my Instagram. I made a video about it because I came up with the idea to kind of co-host, if you will, an art show. I came up with the idea for something irreverent and tacky and just a little, uh, I suppose risque would be the word for it, and it just, it ran away from me. Uh, I decided for this art show, this was back during the summer, but I decided to create a series of bedazzled genitals, and the idea ran away from me. It was a hit. I sold out of nearly all of them and the remaining pieces I put up on Coconati because Coconati, tacky, fabulous, naughty, naughty bits, get it? Yeah. So will I be making more of those? Possibly. They were fun. They're silly. People enjoy them because they are irreverent, stupid, silly things. And I don't know, maybe I just, it's just not something that's on the schedule, on my weekly schedule every week, but that they're there. They have a home on Coconati. If you want one, go check them out. But speaking of new, if you do not follow me on Instagram, then you have not seen this yet, but I have released a new sticker. Uh, it is not seasonal. It is the bat tea batty, this cute little, cute little bat that's in my hands that I'm christening my sketchbook with. And I've also brought back the pumpkin spice latte spooky mug from last year. So that one is back. It has a cousin in the bat. Now the pumpkin spice sticker is not uh it's it's no, no no i should no let me state that again the pumpkin spice sticker is seasonal so once i sell out of my batch of those they will not be coming back until next year i mean unless i redesign it the bat however is not seasonal so that one is going to be sticking around for a while so if you are looking to start your carla sticker collection what the hell are you waiting for i have so many cute stickers available in the shop right now and I have a new one coming which I will not speak about at this moment not because it's a big hush hush secret but because you will see her in a future vlog when I do get it I expect to receive that sticker sometime within the next week so I'm excited for that and uh, yeah stick around if you're curious and stop waiting start your sticker collection today I need to purchase a sticker album actually because I need to start my own sticker collection <laughs> of myself I do put my stickers on all of my sketchbooks, but I need somewhere to put them. Anywho, I am talking way too much. Thank you once again to everyone who purchased during this vlog. I hope that you enjoyed watching your orders get packaged. Yay, you know I love packaging them. So thank you once again. I hope that you enjoy your goodies. This was such a good spread of orders. Just so colorful, so funky, so spooky, fabulous. Love it. Thank you for loving what I do. If you didn't, I wouldn't be doing it, right? At least I would not be doing it in public on this platform. So thank you. I'm shutting my mouth. Let's carry on with the vlog. There's my gaudy ass iguana. We are going to the post office first, then to run a couple of errands, and then I'm going to get my coffee, as I mentioned. No coffee shop. I wanted to go to the coffee shop and get something fancy, but we got a budget, we got a budget. So I'm going to my tried and true trusty McDonald's to get their $3 coffee. It's a giant coffee for three bucks. And you know what? Their black coffee is not bad. So for the price of what? Less than one at the fancy coffee shop, I can get two at McDonald's. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get one, but anyway, we are gonna do that and I'm going to stop talking because I am listening to a good mix right now of my music and there's some Brian Adams on here and my throat is dry and when my throat gets dry and raspy oh you bet your entire ass that I karaoke to Brian Adams because you know he has that cool 1980s pseudo rocker kind of raspy voice so anyway off I go you can speak with Mr. Creepers while I get situated. Okay, so <laughs> what errands were so dire that I needed to leave the house in the middle of the day when it was hot? Well, besides going to the post office, which I absolutely needed to do, Mr. Bentley ran out of treats. 
So I got him two bags because lest one single day go by that he does not have treats. But uh, I got him treats and I also got, yay, I am going to get an iced coffee though right now. And then we are going to head home. Coffee acquired. It's a little bit of cream, you know, that fake unsweetened cream. <laughs> Tastes like that powder stuff they have in offices, right? Um, anyways, there you go. Errands fulfilled. Now let's get back to work. That sounded a little defeated and exasperated, right? Oh, let's get back to work. <laughs> That's not how I meant it. It was actually a relief. I'm glad to be home. And I'm happy to get back to work. Got lots of fun things to do. So let's get to it. So I did go run my errands. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to insert the footage from in the car because I was showing you what I bought. Because yes, I went to go run errands. I got a couple of things that I needed for the house. You know, boring crap like paper towels and stuff. Um, but when I'm out running errands, I'm... I'm undressing, don't look, because I'm going to head out on a walk. So you're going to see me in a state of undress. Ooh, look at me. Ooh, taboo. So hot, right? <laughs> Looking a hot mess. But we did get the coffee. Don't know if that footage, again, if it's going to work, if I'm going to be able to insert it because I touched the lens. It may be, I don't know, I just, things and stuff, right? But I wanted to show you that, okay, I went to go run my errands. Yes, indeed, I went to go run my errands, got my coffee, as promised, and I bought myself a little something because you're out running errands, doing the things that you need to do, and I thought, okay. So, I got my coffee, which is, you know, a nice thing to do for myself, and I purchased something for myself. Gosh, look at me. Well, I'm going to look worse in a minute because we're going to do, you know, one of these whole things. But I purchased, look how cute. My first spooky mug. This may likely be my first and only spooky mug ever. I do not collect mugs or anything. I have two mugs that are just plain white skulls. One of them is just a regular skull. And then I have another mug, again, pure glossy white, that is a Dia de los Muertos sugar skull, but all white, no color. They're just, you know, me, the minimalist, maximalist. But I got my first truly American style Halloween spooky mug. Look how cute this one is. I was shocked to see that some of the mugs go for $15 now. Like, I understand paying $15, $20, 25 for an artist mug, right? You know, merch and things like that, That, of course. But for something at a TJ Maxx, I, I swooped into the TJ Maxx. But it's like $15, why? But this one, luckily, which is typically the opposite, I usually gravitate towards something and it's the most expensive. But today in their little aisle of spooky mugs, the one mug, the one mug that stood out to me happened to be the cheapest, it was $5. Not $5.99, not $6, but $4.99. It was $5. And I was like, okay, you know what? Do something nice for yourself. Grab yourself a mug. This is going to be my buddy for Halloween. And to be honest, probably year-round because it's cute. But it's very traditional Halloween with the black and the orange. And there's dark brown in here as well. I love it. It's cute. And there's a little look. Oh, my people. So anyway... I thought that was really cute. And um, all right, let's go for a walk. It's time to go for a walk. So I have to put the coffee down and uh, go for my walk before it gets too late. And no, I don't do this on purpose. This is not an aesthetic choice. It's just, they won't stay if I put them up. So my little my little tendrils have to stay. <laughs> well, that, that's that's a look, right? We'll, we'll deal with it with bobby pins. But anyway, I gotta go. I gotta go. I will see you later. But while I'm handling this, let me know in the comments if you are a spooky mug collector. Let me know. Or leave me, if you made it this far in the vlog, leave me... We always leave bats, right? Bats are our love language on this channel. But leave me leave me a little pumpkin or leave me a pumpkin and a bat. Let's, let's be super cliche Halloween, okay?
Do you like my mug? Do you hate it? Is it not cutesy kitschy enough for you? Listen, I'm not a Disney bitch. I don't like that kind of stuff. But anyway, you know, the, the bright, cute, cartoony Disney Halloween stuff. No, that's not for me. I like this. Anyway, okay. <sighs> one more, one more, one more. Okay, let's go for a walk. Well, you're not coming with me. The sun's going down. You're not going to be able to see anyway. Okay. I said I wasn't planning on bringing you all walking because it's getting dark, but look. The street is very insect heavy. So the little flip flaps are going nuts. <laughs> so cute. Oh, we're missing the overhead swoops. They, oh my god. Dive bombs and everything. Some of them are getting very, very close. They appear much further on camera, but they're super close. <laughs> oh, I love walking with them. Watch, I am going to stand still and see if they decide to get closer. Because sometimes they do. Just missed one. Damn it. Oh my god, there are so many out tonight. You definitely can't see them all as they are out of frame, but oh my god. Somebody. Somebody swoop in. Quick, because I gotta go. It is only fitting that I include this portion of the packaging video after our walk because as you can see I am packaging wax melts for white bat wax. I'm glad you guys are digging these wax melts. I have people who have never been introduced to my artwork whatsoever. They still have no idea that I'm an artist probably purchasing my wax and then I have some of you guys who have been with me for a while who are scooping up some wax melts so thank you to everyone. Uh, it is so fun making these friggin' things. My apartment smells so good. I mean, it always smells good, but now it smells like me, which sounds weird, but it's a good thing. So yay for that. Uh, this order actually came via Coconati. So I do sell the wax melts on Coconati, and then I have an independent Etsy shop for the wax melts as well. So that's how some people know who I am. Some people know me as just a wax girl. Some people know me as Carla, who also makes wax. You know, you, you get it. Anyway, signed book going out, and then we've got one more sticker order, and then that is going to bring us to the end of the vlog. I have some dog sitting that I need to do. I need to clean the apartment somehow, and there you go. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. What is happening? Why am I being yelled at? What? Oh my gosh, I am being yelled at. I am being attacked. What is happening? What? 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 Here, here. You win. I'm on the floor. Is that what you want? Ooh, hi. Ooh, you guys are so dramatic. Yes, you're both dramatic. Miss Domino, look. Look, now he's over there murdering his bear. Bentley. Mm. Where are you going now? Look, why do you do this to me? And then I get abandoned. What is with you guys? Bunch of weirdos. Bunch of freaks. Look at... Freaks. Oh, excuse me, she forgot the outro. Be bad, be good, I don't give a damn which. Just come back in one piece, all right? Now, now we are done. I will see you in the next one.